Hello, and welcome to the SeaBuild online recorded workshop entitled Becoming an Effective Board President. Thank you for coming tonight. It's nice to have you all here. My name is Nina Johnson, and I'm here with my colleague Art Sherwood. Hello, everyone. Say hello, Art. There you are. Hello. Um, and we are consultants with CDS Consulting Co-op, and we will be facilitating this workshop tonight. Art and I have gathered from our team of, team of colleagues from the world at large and from our own experiences the best wisdom we can we could on the subject of effective board leadership. So we thank you all for tuning in and participating in this conversation with us. Um, and I want to introduce to you our guest panelists. They are Donna Straup, the board president at Blooming Foods in Bloomington, Indiana. We have hey, Alex everyone. Jory. Oh, yes, Donna, say hello. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have Alex Jory, the general manager of Brattleboro Food Co-op in Brattleboro, Ooh. Vermont. Hi there. Hi there. Thanks for being here, Alex. And we have Steve Peterson, the board president at Oneota Community Food Co-op in Decorah, Iowa. Hello. Hi, Steve. And we have uh, me. I am Nina Johnson, and I am of the former president of Mississippi Market in St. Paul, Minnesota. I was the board chair uh, from 2008 to 2010. So I have a little bit of background in this as well. And I'm just going to take a couple seconds here to give an overview of the Seabuild program. And that is, um, it's a program offered by the CDS Consulting Co-op. We are a team of consultants who work with co-op boards to increase their competency and effectiveness in governance. We provide online workshops just like this one, um, which are included along with field guides and other great resources in our SeaBuild library. Uh, we also provide ongoing support to our client boards and planning and facilitation of an annual retreat. The CBL 101 workshop, which is the, the one-day foundations or refresher class in cooperative governance. Um, and you can get all kinds of fabulous information about us at the at our website that's listed there on the slide. And now I'm going to turn this over to Art. Yeah. Uh, we have a variety of learning objectives today uh, dealing with uh, becoming an effective board president. Um, those participating or listening will ultimately learn and we'll talk about uh, what is the actual role of the board president. Um, lay, that will lay the foundation for starting the conversation about what do we actually mean about being an effective board president. Uh, we'll go on from there and, and ask, uh, you know, why is it important to have an effective board president? Um, what that helps create and what's missing if it's, it's not there. Um, and finally, we're going to go around and ask the panelists a variety of uh, questions to bring out their insights on three different areas um, that are important for being an effective board president, including skills, knowledge, and temperament. So we have a very limited time, and we will use the 60 minutes the best way we can, and hopefully in the end we'll have uh, time for uh, some Q&A. We're going to have the introduction, then we'll talk about the roles, uh, what it means to be effective and importance um, for 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'll just overview um, the model of becoming an effective board president. We'll discuss each of these components, about seven minutes each. Time's tight, so we'll uh, uh, do about seven minutes, one minute overview, four minute panelist discussion um, uh, up front, and then we'll have some buffer time in there uh, uh, to have an interactive discussion amongst the panelists. And at the end, we should have a bit of time uh, for open Q&A. And please, any, any time along the way, you can send a question via the webinar tool. And if there's a way for us to fit it in within our um, discussion as we go, we'll definitely do that and can put it to panelists. Um, otherwise, uh, we will try to gather those at the end of the discussion and address them um, as best we can. Nina. Great. So we will now start with learning about what is the board president's role? We kind of figured out that to understand what it means to be a good one, you have to know what a board president actually does. Um, so one place you might find a definition of this role is in policy. 
all of us on boards work with and use these policies, so we thought we'd pull one. This is um, an example that we pulled from the CDS Consulting Co-op Policy Template, which is also found in the CBUILD Library. And this lays out the President's role. So here it is, a little snippet from that policy. Um, and basically this talks about that the board president can use any reasonable interpretation of board process policy. The board president sets agendas and chairs the meetings. The board president is responsible for the perpetuation of the board and of the board leadership and is the outward face or the representative of the board. So that's fairly simple, straightforward stuff. Um, another resource that we can draw from is the concept of servant leadership. This is an idea that was developed by a man named Robert Greenleaf and was then applied to boards and governance by John Carver, um, from, whom, from whose article we've drawn the summary. So we've, uh, I'll, I'll summarize some of the points about servant leadership. So these first two um, address the issue of that the power and the burdens the burden of governance lies with the board as a whole and not with its president. And this means that we need to define the board's job first and then later determine how a president can assist with that job. The next point talks about that the president exists to serve the board and must lead this board to excellence. And though the whole board is responsible, the president must be the leader in creating a culture of discipline among the board. Um, in my experience, let's see, did I cover all these things? Yeah. I, as board president, my experience, I didn't really know about servant leadership, but I experienced it. Um, and now that I have learned about it and read up on it, it's, it is quite clear. Um, that this servant leadership mindset is key to excellence in board process and, cre and in creating positive board culture. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff and you can get more resources on that at the end. Um, I also see that the board as a whole ought to use servant leadership to understand itself, that, it, that the board as a whole is a servant leader of the co-op's owners. Um, and then a third resource that we can look at to understand the role of the president is um, to understand how the president's role fits into the greater scheme of things. So this slide shows what we call the accountability change, and it describes the flow of delegation from one group in the organization to the next. So just as the membership elects and delegates the governance of their co-op to the board of directors, the board president has the powers it has because the board, its superior, has delegated responsibility to it. So the president is empowered by the board and must answer to it. So we've heard some things about uh, how we might look at what the role is of the board president. And uh, uh, Nina and I'd like to actually go and ask the, uh, the panelists what's, what their experience has been and um, you know, what's your reaction to what we've put up here. Is this uh, what you've experienced? Are there any things that you would add? And uh, to start this off, I might ask Alex, who uh, I remind you is uh, the general manager at uh, Brattleboro Food Co-op. Well, there, there was one point that I was uh, thinking about while the presentation was going on. And that is that, uh, in my experience, I probably experienced uh, you know a dozen board presidents in my tenure at the co-op. And the, the most effective ones are the ones whose approach is a servant leader approach. I mean, there have been ones that wanted to mold the board to their thinking uh, or the way they wanted uh, to get things done. And, and the, generally, when I would meet with them once a month to look at agendas, it would be like, well, how do we you know, uh, achieve a certain thing that we're trying to get the board to uh, decide on. Whereas the most effective ones are, um, how do we run a really effective board meeting? A good discussion where we get as many people um, um, 
giving their opinions and in getting involved in the conversation as possible. So I think that's a really, really big point in the role of the president. That's my experience of the ones who have been most effective. Uh, thanks for that, Alex. Um, Donna, Steve, are there some things you might add in as well? Well, the one thing that I think that is missing, this is Donna. Sorry, I jumped in there really quick. Um, but in, in our situation at um, Blooming Foods, I felt like we needed to take a, a st one more step back and look at the construction of our board because we had a board of seven people serving two-year terms. And in, in, in my opinion, and what actually played out over the course of several years, is that it made for a very volatile board because there could be, it could be that there would be four brand new board members over half of the board in one year because of the two-year elections, or because of the two-year terms. And so one of the things that, that I did lead, and the rest of the board completely agreed, and it passed and through our membership, is that we actually changed our bylaws so that we now have three-year terms. And it just pr gives a level of stability to our board so that it's not quite so volatile. And I think that that's a real key factor. And so here was... Uh you as president seeing something that was going to help improve the performance of the board and, and taking steps to, to lead that change. Exactly. Great. Thank and, you. Uh, Steve? Oh, I just wanted to add in that, um, that it's, nothing, it's nothing new to the list, but I wanted to, um, I guess, reiterate what Alex was saying, too, um, that uh, to listen, to actively listen, is a, seems really important for a board president um, to to be uh, thinking not so much in terms of an agenda to accomplish, um, but to look for the deeper issues that might be underneath people's um, people's words, and to try to understand the concerns that are are um, behind that. So that uh, because the issues are um, in our situation, we've had ongoing um, transition issues, which I won't describe right now. I'm sure there might, there might be a different time to describe that. But um, one of the things that was has been important is to um, is to because those issues don't go away um, to try to understand what's really behind them. Um, and so, I suppose in that way, um, leading by helping people articulate what the issues are so that they can actually be dealt with effectively. Right, right. Once again, trying to help other people be effective uh, directors on the board. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back, uh, back over to Nina, who's going to talk about effectiveness and importance. Yeah. So we have a little bit, perhaps, better understanding of the role of the president. Um, and so how do we know a good one when we see one? What's the difference between a so-so president and an excellent one? So let's talk, let's ask our panelists, how would you describe an ideal board president? And why is effectiveness important? Um, so if you have stories to tell or you know, interesting things to share, we'd love to hear it. Donna, would you like to start? Um, I think, when I think of my role as a board president, I feel like my, my biggest job is just to be there as a facilitator to have a productive meeting. And that means, you know, getting an agenda sent out, you know, well in advance, making sure that people have the materials that they need to review ahead of time, making sure that we all are on the same page, that, that really um, thinking about our educational um, structure as well so that we, we have our board members and when we have new members, we, we get them up to par and, and really on board with policy governance and the things that we're doing that they may not have encountered before. So um, we really think a lot about our board training and I, I just feel like I'm there to help make sure that things keep moving along in the direction where we want to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Steve, do you have anything to add? Well, um, our, our co-op has a little, probably a little bit different history. We don't have as long of a history with um, uh, a policy governance system, um, or a really a, um, a, 
a planned or planful approach to governance. And so we've just started to do that in the last several years um, and in some, in some difficult situations. And so I think one thing that I would say in that kind of situation that it's um, maybe important, and I'm not sure that I'm qualified to be an effective <laughs> board president or not, but, you know, we try. And uh, strategic, to be a strategic thinker, right, is to, uh, I, I think that's really important to, to be thinking ahead, to be actively listening to people and uh, trying to build the capacity of the knowledge base and the discussion capabilities, um, you know, even to deal with difficult issues. Um, I think is really important. Great. Okay, so two things I've heard so far um, about what an ideal effect, ideal president is um, an, an excellent facilitator and a strategic thinker. Those are two. Yeah, an active ones. listener, too. I, I, that was my second one. Okay, yeah, that's excellent. Um, and Alex, do you have any uh, description of an ideal board president? Well, my board president is sitting right next to me. What can <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, one, one, I'll make a comment that uh, for the last uh, number of years, the board president actually does not facilitate the meetings. We have one of the other board members does it. And that's, um, that's been really effective for the, uh, to allow the board president to monitor what's going on in the room. And uh, I've you know, it, unless you're a really amazing facilitator, and and so the, the, it doesn't really matter. I'd say if you if you would like to be able to sit back and see what's going on and be able to help the dy dy dynamic process, I think it would be a good thing to consider that idea. Um, but I think that uh, uh, one of the things, I guess, it's a, sort of my rule of thumb is that one of the most important relationships in the cooperative in the board level is the relationship between the general manager and the board president. And um, I think that, you know, as that relationship goes, um, so goes the, uh, the, 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 the spirit of the, of the board and, and a, lot of th a lot of times what, what the co-op can accomplish. So my viewpoint has always been to try to uh, really understand my place and not uh, feel like I'm managing the board, although many times over the years we've sort of, uh, you know, facetiously to some extent and seriously to some extent said that, you know, the general manager has to manage the board. But, I, but it's not as, uh, it's not as uh, you know, blatant. Uh, and, and evil as it sounds, it's really <laughs> a under, understanding um, the dynamics and trying to foster a good uh, dynamic uh, in the board. So that, that's just okay. uh, a couple things I'd like to, I wanted to add. Great. Okay. Thank you all for your input. Very interesting points. Um, Art, do you want to talk about the next piece? Yep, I sure do. Um, so moving into this, we can imagine that uh, we have uh, a variety of people out there. We've got uh, hundreds of food co-ops, and each of them has a board. And uh, for the most part, each has some sort of leadership position, like a president or chair or whatnot. And their concerns might be, how do I actually become an effective board president? So what we'd like to do, spending the rest of our time, is to really um, identify and talk about some of the things that uh, are important to consider when you're trying to be, develop into an effective board president. And hear from our panelists in terms of uh, resources or activities or learning experiences or whatnot that might have been helpful to help them gain the skills that they've had or, or even um, how, they, how they've seen other uh, uh, board presidents develop. So when Nina and I and our colleagues were putting this together, there were, we looked at a variety of things that could actually lead to, uh, lead to this being um, 
uh, lead to being an effective board president. One is having knowledge. A second is having a set of skills. And a third is uh, temperaments or attributes about the person. And each of these ultimately can lead to being an effective board president. So when we look at, let me see if I can get my thing to go forward here. Whoops. Uh, when we look at the sets of developmental components that could go into this, we broke it into the two categories of tasks and people. So knowledge, which is a set of concepts, theory, or facts, or things that you actually know, the key question is what knowledge is needed to do the task of the president, and what knowledge is needed to effectively deal with the people as the president. Because as we know, anytime we're trying to solve problems, take advantage of opportunities, and so on, we're going to need to know how to actually manage that task, as well as to uh, serve and help the people be effective uh, while working together. But knowledge is not enough. We also have to have some practice ability with that knowledge. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are the skills needed to be an effective president and uh, to deal with tasks? And what are the skills needed to effectively deal with the people as president? And finally, we were looking at the idea of temperament or attributes. And are there different types of dispositions or qualities that can be developed to um, uh, deal effectively with the tasks and also the people of uh, as president. So Nina, why don't you take us through this yeah. first part uh, so let's, of knowledge. Yeah, let's get specific about how you can become an excellent board president and how our panelists have done it themselves. Um, here's a little analogy. You may be, you may know conceptually how to drive a car, but it doesn't mean you're a good driver but you can't be a good driver without understanding the concepts. And likewise, it's important for presidents to have these things, knowledge, skills, and certain attributes or temperaments in order to drive the car well. So we'll start talking about some of the specific knowledge that you might need. Um, you'll want to be familiar with board policies and your chosen system of governance, which you know there's a variety of different ways, uh, one of which is policy governance. Um, so whatever policy structure or system your board uses, um, policy governance or another, or be whether you use consensus or some version of Robert's rules, the president should be fluent in whatever system you use. Um, you will want to have an understanding of the board and the co-op's history and culture. So you should learn about your co-op's story, how it started, and what were the milestones and have awareness of the board's group dynamics, its personalities, its strengths and weaknesses. And third, you ought to have a vision for how the board can excel. Um, and it's important here to understand the difference between vision for the board and vision for the co-op as a whole. And maybe our panelists can speak to that a bit in their time. So now we're going to turn to our panelists. and. You know, just ask, what's your reaction to this list of these items, these knowledge items? Is there anything missing? And I'd like to know also, how did you gain your knowledge? Um, and if you could share some suggestions on how to build this knowledge. Um, and let's start with Steve. OK. Um, well, um, our story is, uh, I'll just give a quick one. We had an expansion of this about three uh, years ago. And at the same time, we went through a leadership transition where we hired a new general manager. And since that time, there's been a, a lot of change in our co-op, a lot of turmoil. And so um, at the time that we were going through our um, expansion, we, uh, we knew that to plan for that, we needed to get our governance. We knew that we would be ramping up significantly uh, the, uh, the kinds of uh, stresses, but also the kinds of activities that we need to be uh, doing and so we decided that we w would um, we were nominally a, a policy governance uh, board, but we had not really had any training or really much knowledge at all um, about that. And so what we did was um, we uh, went through a we sort of we talked to people, um, general managers and other board presidents in the area, and found out about uh, C build actually and. Um, 
and eventually uh, contracted with Seabuild. And, um, and it was through that that we started uh, getting some templates for policies and started thinking about what policies do and how, how boards um, interact with those policies and how those policies interact with general managers and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, and, and, and so that's how we sort of entered into um, uh, gaining a knowledge base in our, in our, uh, on our board. Um, through a series of connections, really mostly regional connections, but also through um, CBUILD. And, um, and then I think an attitude, so that's sort of one way that we went, we went through that to gain knowledge. But I think um, another thing is that we, um, and I think this was really extremely fortunate for us. I don't know uh, where it came from, uh, whether it was just the response to stressful times or it was... Um, that we were, uh, as a board, all in of this of a similar uh, attitude, but a, a sense that that we were looking for a reflection, not so much perfection. So, um, as we were going through a lot of um, stuff, we adopted a reflective sort of a reflective practice model, where we would look uh, at what we done and look at what how people react and look at the problems that are out there and 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 try to use the systems that we were gaining some facility in to um, help us understand how to how to handle problems and so I think that combination of of reaching outside of ourselves being fairly insular in our our small corner of northeast Iowa and um, and reaching outside of ourselves, even regionally, was something that was a little different. And uh, reaching nationally through the Seabill group and through the list, the board list serve and stuff like that were really, really helpful to to pose what if questions or hey, how do you guys do this or what's your thinking on this? So um, I'll stop there because I don't want to take up too much time. Great, thank you, Steve. I appreciate some of those points you raised. That's excellent. And I'm wondering, Alex, if you have any things that you might add to this list of um, items that people ought to know to be an effective board president. Is there uh, anything missing from our list? Yeah, you know, could you go back to that list in the pan on the uh, computer? And then mm -hmm. I'll sure. tell you what you're missing. <laughs> 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 Not really. Um, I, I think that it would be really good for you to hear from John Hatton, who's our board president and has been president for several years and has been a very good one for us, uh, on some thoughts, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm not a board president, and so it's not, it's not the same perspective. John, you want to comment? So we get a special guest appearance from John. The list seems pretty short. I guess there are a bunch of things I'd add. One of the things that I like, or I appreciate, that I come from is having an extra, having a history with the industry, uh, the natural foods industry and the co-op industry. And so, and having been a CCMA a, a lot of times, I think it's expanded my perspective on on what's out there and what's going on. And I think it's been helpful to our board to do the same thing for people to go to CCMA for the board president having been there. And I think all of that broader perspective has been helpful to Alex as the general manager, I think, in trying to understand where we could take the co-op. That's excellent. Well, thank you, John, for moonlighting on our show here. <laughs> I appreciate your input. Anything further while we've got you? Well, you'll have me for a while. I'm sitting there. Okay, down. excellent. <laughs> All right, I'm and Don. Captured him. Yes, <laughs> Don. I'm wondering if you have anything that you might add to this list or other uh, suggestions about how to gain this knowledge. Well, I guess I would just sort of reiterate some of the things that have already been said. Um, CCMA. My first CCMA session was a real eye opener for me um, as a board member, and just really got me to see the bigger picture of co-ops and, you know, kind of how we fit in. And so that was extremely valuable. But also the Seabuild program um, has 
saved our co-op, I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, I don't think I'm going too far in saying that. But um, having a facilitator, having somebody that we can talk to and that can help kind of bring us along into new developments. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're board members, but we all have full-time jobs. You know, this is not our full-time job. And we can't, we don't have thousands of hours to devote to it and learning everything about it and, and everything that's new in the industry and, and all of that. So having a facilitator uh, on the Seabill team has just been tremendous for us. Um, it has really helped us think about our policies. Our policies have gone through several revisions. Um, we initially began policy governance about 12 years ago. And that was when I was on the board the first time around. And um, they were just beginning to embrace the idea, but it never, it, I, it didn't really stick. It didn't, there just wasn't a commitment to it until about four years ago. And um, making that real commitment that, yes, this is what we're going to do, and we're not going to argue about it, we're just going to do it, has really helped our board. And we are kind of all on the same page now, and we know where we're going. And that's been tremendous for us. I'd like Allie, to say, oh, could, I, could I comment uh, on, on, on that or piggyback on that uh, about what I think is the importance of the C-Build um, counselor or the, the, the person who works with our board from CDF Consulting. Uh, I think that's been really an amazing help to our, uh, to our board president and therefore the effect on our board has been amazing because you know, when there are issues out there, there's a, a, a very, very uh, uh, intelligent perspective that, 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 the, uh, that the CDF consultant brings to our board president or whoever uh, she's talking to. And so when we have uh, sessions then, um, it's a good back and forth and a good exchange of ideas and, it's, you know, sometimes uh, a little bit of debating going on about things. but. It keeps me as a general manager from, uh, you know, getting back on my heels and, and uh, taking things for granted. And I really like that a whole lot. This is Steve, and I, I just have to agree. I think that um, the CBIL program and the, the ability to actually think through things with other people who are that expert in the in the field, and, and I'm a third grade teacher. I'm, I mean, this is not, <laughs> you know, this is not my, um, you know, my area of expertise is uh, governance, board governance. But um, to have that that ability to talk to somebody is, um, has, I, I think it's for sure saved our board, and, and, and I think uh, because our board was saved, we didn't wreck the co-op either. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want everyone to know that we did not pay these people to say this. <laughs> Indeed, we did not. But you know, it's interesting. I think the underlying uh, issue here um, uh, is that access to knowledge that's outside your own co-op is really, really important. And one of the attendees actually sent in a question. I was just reading it and. Uh, told her I would try to interject it and it actually fits in really well here is um, you know how might uh, board presidents um, find a way to interact with one another um, on a regional basis at least uh, beyond the the typical things like CCMA and do any of the panelists do that sort of thing on a regular basis um, um, or would that seem to be a useful uh, activity to have happen. Any this thoughts? is this is Steve. Um, I don't do it on a on a, on a regular basis, um, but I think it would be useful um, to have happen. I think if, I mean there's uh, there's always the option of the board listserv, which is you know imperfect you know, um, way to interact with people for sure, but. Um, but uh, I know that our schedules are tight, and you know, with day jobs and stuff like that. But um, it seems like um, there there could be a real benefit to that. I know at one point um, the C bill a representative a consultant was thinking about doing something like that, um, and um, I don't know that we never got that any farther than the dream stage. I think. 
Right. Any this thoughts is Donna. On the, yeah. This, this is Donna, and and I feel like that I get that already through my Seabuild consultant because we have regularly scheduled monthly calls where I have an hour of his time <laughs> that that is is strictly mine and he interacts with many co-ops and so I feel like I'm getting you know the wisdom from all of those co-ops through my consultant and that I'm not having to you know coordinate a whole bunch of meetings and a bunch of phone calls and things like that um, it, it's very simple for me and I feel like I'm gaining all of that knowledge and one of the things that, that I wanted to kind of bring up here is it was sort of a revelation to me when I re when I realized what was happening is that as things happen in our co-op you know an angry member writes a letter to the board and says you know why aren't you carrying this or that or something else and or, or why aren't you doing this and, and my initial reaction to those kinds of things tends to usually side with the member who's who's complaining because my initial reaction to things is usually as a member because that's primarily what I am in our co-op. You know, I got involved in our co-op because I wanted a good place to shop. And so that was my initial reason for even becoming involved. And I do tend to react my knee-jerk reaction to things is from that perspective, from a member perspective, not from a board perspective. And so when I talk to my consultant, you know, he's able to, to help me step back and take a look at things and think things through and think things through from the manager's perspective and why are we doing this and why are we doing that. And it all makes perfect sense. <laughs> and so I just feel like that my consultant helps keep me on track in thinking as a board president instead of as a member. Right. Well, this is great. You guys have all sorts of great information and suggestions to share. Thank you. Um, well, and let's, move on to, uh, you want to move on to skills? Yeah. Yeah. So right. we've dealt with knowledge. We're going to move on to skills. And these are um, perhaps more specific items. Um, perhaps more task-oriented things? Um. And skills are things that uh, can develop with practice. You get better at them with practice, we hope, anyway. And so when we were putting together a list, here is a start to one. One, uh, certainly we've heard this already in this conversation, being able to run effective meetings, respecting director's times. Um, dealing with agendas, both long and short term. Listening well, speaking articulately, which uh, has, has come up as well in our conversation today. Um, balancing the voices, making sure that each director has a chance at, and does speak so that their voice is heard. Uh, dealing with uh, inevitable conflict that arises. Uh, delegation of both tasks and uh, leadership on uh, areas that the board needs to do work. And having a positive working relationship with the GM, which, which Alex mentioned earlier. Um, this is certainly not uh, an extensive uh, 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 a list that includes everything. So again, we would love to hear um, the panelists' uh, thoughts about these skills and what uh, you might add to it. And particularly, you know, again, what are the ways that you went about developing um, your skills and practicing them, and any stories that you might want to share along the line of doing that. Um, Actually, Donna, would you mind starting us out in this area? I'd be happy to. Um, the first skill that you have on your list is running an effective meeting and respecting the director's time. And um, my background, I'm in, I was an internal auditor for 26 years. And I spent the majority of my time figuring out ways to improve business processes. And, um, and I'm also a, a natural organizer. <laughs> And so one of the things that, that I brought to the board was um, just some detailed agendas, a format for a detailed agenda, and developing our board calendar with you know, clearly laid out plans on when we're going to monitor what policies and, and other activities that the board is responsible for throughout the year, and making sure that we have everything in one place so that when I, as the president, develop the agenda, um, you know, we've got we've got the plan. We have you know our our ends policies, which drive our board policies, which drive our board calendar, which drive our agenda. 
And so they're all very clearly linked there. And um, so I think that that you know my natural inclination as an organizer was a real asset. But I think in just you know finding tools, calendars, and formats and things that you can use to help you have very effective meetings is just a tremendous asset. I think it's it's really helped our board and just. Um, Having the tools that you need and making sure that everybody has the manuals, the the policies, that they know what we're going to do and when we're going to do it, and that they're all expected to come prepared. And they do <laughs> every time. It's wonderful. Thanks, Donna. Um, Steve, uh, Alex, other things to add? John? <laughs> well, this is Alex here. Um, I actually do have one little uh, thing uh, to add that <clears throat> sort of supplements all of this, actually. And that is that, um, this, uh, I guess it doesn't just apply to the board president, but it, it applies to me as general manager. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a skill that you, you have to have. And, and that is a certain amount of self-discipline, which uh, my board president would probably fall off his chair if, if, if he actually was really sitting here. Um, and, uh, and what I mean by that uh, is, is to be able to understand that all those people around the table um, care about the co-op as much as you do, or maybe more. Um, and therefore, when they come up with an idea that you think really sucks, that you have the discipline to listen to the idea and to you know accept the conversation that goes on around it. And if uh, if that idea carries, then you say fine. You know we'll watch and see, make sure that there's no noxious effect of it. But you don't sort of uh, factionalize over it and say you know to the ne the next time you get a chance you say boy what a sucky idea. How could they have done that? You know, it sows the seeds of, of uh, ill will and uh, stress in an organization. And so I think that personally for me, that has kept me able to keep coming back, you know, meeting after meeting. And sometimes the meetings are hard, but basically accepting that people are going to have a different opinion. And I, I think that's just the nuance of, um, you know, that section where it says balance the voices, listen to what other people are saying. That's great. Uh, some awesome points from both uh, Donna and Alex. Uh, Steve, would you like to add anything in there? You know, I think um, they've just they've said a lot um, that I was thinking of saying. So I, I won't add anything other than just especially uh, what Alex said about um, uh, not factualizing the board, um, especially in a situation where you're you know, it's already um, the possibility of that happening. Um, there has to be some way of just, you know, having the talk, having the conversation, and then um, having the the discussion, the vote, or whatever, and then moving on, um, and with the idea that the 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 keep our eyes on the prize, the, the and the prize is a is a good functioning board and a successful co-op, and that's really really what matters, not whether I win or you win or, you know, it's that kind of stuff. Right, right. Thanks. Um, I have, excellent. I have one more thing to add, if sure, I could. Sure, please. Um, and, and I don't know how you bring this about, but it's something that, that has happened on our board that I think is just fabulous. And it's that, it's that the natural talents of everybody on our board just seem to come out and, and flourish in our board meetings. We have a tremendous amount of respect for each other on our board. And I know that on past boards that hasn't always been the case, but it certainly is the case at this point in time. And it just has just made our board so effective and so open to listening to all of the ideas that come out. Um, it, it's real, and I don't know how you foster that, you know, take steps to foster that respect, but I guess just by giving it yourself. But we have such talented people on our board, and, and they all bring so much to it that it's really a joy to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. You know, and I wonder if that doesn't relate actually to the, the final component that we're going to talk about, um, dealing with attributes and, and temperament. Um, I, I think there might be a relationship there. Uh, Nina, you want to introduce yeah. this? Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of the, several of the items that people spoke to were, you know, I guess some of these categories are a little bit, you know, loose. <laughs> so there's a certain crossover for sure. Um, one of the questions that I've been having about all of this is um, how much of this is um, learnable? Is some of this just natural temperament? You know, is it nurture or is it nature kind of questions? So some of the things um, about attributes or temperament are kind of personality issues. Um, but some of the items that we gathered, and you can certainly add to this list, um, is uh, the first one being being passionate about creating effective group process. The focus should be on drawing out the wisdom, like Donna said, the wisdom that exists in the room, the wisdom that each person brings to the table. So to really, as president, to draw that out. Um, another piece is to um, a good and effective board president will have just the right amount of time to do the job. Uh, too much time can actually be a little dangerous. If a person spends all their time focusing on this, um, they may become too controlling and may neglect to develop leadership in others. So just to have a good amount of time in your life to devote to this. Um, another item would be to be approachable and welcoming to all, that including the general manager, the board, and to all members. Um, so be patient, be a diplomat, um, and like has been said, just you know, to really foster respect and listening. Um, be respectful of disagreement. And as was mentioned under um, some of the skills, is to seek out the diversity of views, to actually pursue that, to create an environment where heated discussion is okay and is desired because those kinds of conflicts or those conversations that are challenging are going to really draw out the creativity and to push the board to think in a broader way. Um, and then the fifth one is to have the ability to delegate. So that kind of points to facilitating leadership skills in others. The goal is for the whole board to be good leaders. Um, Another piece that I experienced as board chair was, and a piece that I really had to learn and was a challenge for me, was that I needed to be willing to be the figurehead. Um, so I needed to be able to stand up and speak at the annual meeting, which I did twice. Um, I needed, you know, needed to be willing to be a public face, have my photo in the annual report, and I had to speak in public. I had to. Speak um, talk to the press and to government officials around um, a, a store expansion. So this was, you know, all new for me, and that was something frightening. <laughs> but I got, I got okay, and I got pretty good at it just by practicing, um, and I was willing to learn that. Um, so, um, panelists, what would you say um, is is your experience regarding? attributes or temperament. Again, if you, if you care to speak to the sort of nature versus nurture question or to share a story with us about how you developed what you feel are the appropriate attributes or temperament for to be an effective board president. Um, and let's see, I wonder if Alex perhaps might speak to this or, or maybe John as well. You want to start, start out, Alex? Well, I'll start it out, but I, I don't know if you're going to really love what I'm going to say, but I think you need one yeah. board member uh, uh, on the board that everybody likes to beat up on, and then it, that's sort of like a lightning rod for all the evil uh, feelings, and then, then you can really get something done. So uh, am I being facetious? Probably a little bit. but. <laughs> just, I, we have one person on our board right now who's a really effective board member, but He's also one we love to beat up on. We have a lot of fun with it, and uh, so it helps the whole general spirit of the uh, of the board meeting. Um, Perhaps so, it's a comic relief element. Well, yeah, you know, actually, <laughs> that's a really good thing. You know, if you come in so serious, like, oh God, you know, we got to do all this really important stuff, you can really get bogged down. So I think what I'm saying really is, uh, you got to you got to allow some comic relief uh, mm -hmm. at the meeting. And uh, 
you know, um, I think that the the last one on this list of have, having the ability to delegate, I think that's so important for a board president to uh, know that whereas, the, you know, everybody has a set of skills and certain things that they're really good at, but because you're good at one thing doesn't mean you're good at everything. So you got to sort of know that and being able to you know, have the humility to, to uh, delegate tasks to folks around the table that, who can, you know, present a topic or, you know, whatever. So uh, that's, that's really important a skill, I think, anyway. Excellent. Thank you. Um, anything else? Others? Donna, would you like to add something to this? Do you have any no. suggestions or? I don't know. And, and our board, people have, rather than delegate, people have just sort of risen to the occasion. <laughs> And that has been really wonderful to witness where, um, you know, we need somebody to, to, you know, to organize and lead our board education program. And, and you know, the people with the, with the talents in that area and with the passion for it are the ones that, that are, the, are the ones that volunteer. And, um, you know, letting people do what they really love and, and being able to see that in them, I think, is, is, is a really good talent to to just acknowledge people's talents and encourage them. Great. So leading by stepping back. <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, Steve, do you have anything that you would like to add? I think just um, um, I, in our co-op, I think what we're seeing is that, um, again, that the I agree that the, dele the delegation um, is, is it's happening more by people stepping up. Um, and especially, uh, now we've had a large board term turnover um, in the last year, and so we, we're, we're having to start over again. But, um, but I think um, my hope and, and goal, I guess, is to, is to be helping to facilitate that next generation of leadership as it comes in. Something that's really important too is the one above that. I mean, in our in in this in a situation where it's a tense situation, is somehow to be respectful in disagreement um, doesn't mean that there isn't disagreement or that there um, isn't. Uh, I mean that 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 everybody makes nice at the end. It's just um, that I think you got to know when you know when the when the disagreement's over and that we're moving on to something else. Mm. Good point. Yeah, I'd like to comment that that's actually a really good point that I think it was Steve just made, because I think a lot of times we are so solicitous of the person who is disagreeing, and we want to make sure they're heard, that it goes way overboard, and uh, you, you let the conversation go on way too long. I, I think uh, to learn a discipline of making sure the person is heard and then moving on is important. Otherwise, it really does bog, bog down process. And, uh, I, you know, I, just speaking personally, uh, my own reaction, I get a little impatient with that when it goes a, a little bit too long. Um, you know, being solicitous of the person's feelings. Um, they have to grow up, too, and know that their, <laughs> their, their point is made and, uh, you know, let it go and then move on. Any I think thought? it's a form of respect, actually. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. I think it's a That's form it. of respect to uh, to do that. Uh, uh, it's not. It's 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 more respectful to um, just say it and, and and deal with it. Right. Yeah. Good point. And that can be a challenge for for leaders, for especially newer ones who aren't accustomed to conflict, and to really kind of balancing some of that that charged energy in the room. So that's, that's oh, a yeah. good one to wrap this up on. Yeah. And to sort of stay out of the fray and just sort of watch from above in a way and kind of try to pull, draw out some of the commonalities in, in the different arguments and try to sort of build bridges between people and, you know, draw out what's the wisdom from their different, from their differing views. Are there any thoughts about whether this stuff is learnable or is it, does it come naturally? 
Oh gosh, to the extent that um, that I become more effective, uh, it's learnable for me. That's for sure. Um, I think what it requires, though, is um, uh, a, a a commitment to reflection. Mm. Right. Believe it or not, we are about uh, three minutes away from the end of our hour. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that happened, but it did. And what I'd like to do is do uh, quickly go through the end of these and then give everybody uh, that's on the panel one, number one, a huge thanks, but a chance to pretend that a new board president is coming up to you and asking you for advice and you get to do, and you're in an elevator, 30 second elevator speech on how to uh, become an effective board president and kind of go uh, do the rounds. We'll do that in a second after I get through a couple of these other pieces. Um, uh, and recall that we talked about uh, the board president's job. We talked about uh, why it's important to have an effective board president. And then we talked about skills, knowledge, and temperament. Um, if you are looking for additional resources, and actually there were a couple questions that came from uh, attendees that we don't have a chance to address. Particularly, you guys mentioned that it was important to have a positive GM relationship with the, with the president. Uh, uh, we just recently did a another workshop on that, and it, there's some talk about how to develop that. And um, I think we're going to do some additional work on uh, how do you turn what might not be a positive relationship into a more positive one. But do please check out uh, our our website. We have a lot of free, uh, wonderful resources on there. So let's do this last round robin, and then we'll uh, click off. Um, Let's go ahead and start uh, with Steve. You got your 30-second uh, elevator speech with this brand new president who is looking to you for some advice. 30 seconds in the elevator. Here it is. Okay. Uh, I'd say um, make connections with as many people as you possibly can to learn as much as you possibly can about the job of governance and about your co-op. Uh, listen actively to uh, your colleagues on the board and to the general manager to find out what is um, what the, not just what the words say, but what might be behind the words so that you can help address the deeper issues. And number three would be give yourself a break because you're going to mess up. Fantastic. The person just stepped off and they're going to be much better off. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Really uh, appreciate it. Uh, Alex, would you like to give us your uh, elevator speech? Well, I would say, first of all, plan the meeting well. Start the meeting on time. Know what items need discussion and um, allow discussion to be full and re respectful of everybody. And, uh, uh, and uh, have something there to eat so everybody you know, can recharge their batteries during the meeting. <laughs> that's it, brother. Food solves a lot of problems. That's why. That's mm -hmm. why uh, I like to hang out with co-ops, uh, the good food. <laughs> thank you very much. That was great. And thank you also for being here. Um, and uh, side thanks to John for participating. Um, and finally, Donna, we'll give you the last word, your, your elevator speech. OK. My elevator speech is really brief. Talk to your GM, join C-Build, listen to your consultant, and finish your meetings on time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. And with that, we will draw our uh, our webinar to a close. Actually, a minute over, so I, I messed up. I, I really try to keep us on track. But really, thank you to all your panelists. Thank you to uh, attend uh, the people who attended. Um, we really appreciate it. And you know, this is all part of the effort of uh, building our knowledge and, and running really awesome co-ops. So, good night, everybody. Thank you all very much. Good night. Good night.